folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Designer's Best. Today we're taking a look at one of the most famous board game designers there is, and that is Wolfgang Kramer. What's interesting about Wolfgang Kramer, though, is that most of his game designing has taken place with other designers. And in fact, on my list, that designer that he's worked with is pretty much the same person for almost a whole list. And we'll talk about this co-designer, Michael Kiesling, in his own list, which will probably be very similar to this list, but uh, Wolfgang Kramer has worked with other people, Richard Ulrich and other designers, and he has done a few games on his own. Um, I think only one of those made my list. One of the games that has probably done very well for Mr. Kramer is Six Nymphed or Five Alive, that game, that card game everyone loves playing, where you're trying not to put the six card in a row. That one is his, and that one's a, a, a lot of fun, but did not make my list. What did my, make my list? Here we go, number 10. Number 10 is a game he designed with a couple other designers, uh, and that, uh, or oh, no, this one he did design by himself, I'm sorry, is Gulo Gulo. This is a kid's game. You're like, why are you putting a kid's game on the list? Because Gulo Gulo is that one kid's game that when someone says, I want to play a game with my kids, but I don't want to take it easy on them, then play this one. A little bowl full of eggs. You are pulling these eggs out, trying not to make a stick fall over. Uh, little kids can pull the eggs out way easier than you can. However, you can strategize and pull out the eggs that hopefully won't make the stick fall over better than kids can. It's a very even fight in that sense, and it really works well. Also, beautiful components. Number nine is Maharaja. This is one that he did with uh, Mr. Kiesling. Uh, Maharaja is one of the games I like because it's not necessarily a game to get the most points, as many of his games are. It's more of a race. As you're moving around trying to drop off these gems in different cities on the board and to control these different Rajas and different folks out there with a strong Indian theme to this game. I remember when I first played it years ago, I was like, wow, this felt different than everything else. It does. It's good. Maharaja. Number eight is Takal. Now, him, Michael Kiesling helped him with this one too. Uh, Takal is in a series of games that he did. There's, it's called the Mask Trilogy because there's big masks on there. But not only that, this is a game that he did as well as Torres, which is not going to make my list spoiler. But where you have action points, where you would get a certain number of action points that you could use each turn. And this would cost some action points. This would cost action points. This one. And this one you're going exploring into the jungle and, and finding these temples, building these temples up. It's really good thematically. A reprint of it just came out. Great game, Takao. Number seven is another game from this mass trilogy, and that's Java. Java, which is being reprinted this year, I'm excited about that. It was another tile laying game, which at the time amazed me because of how thick the tiles were nowadays. You know, but there, there's different levels, and you'd put these tiles out and trying to control different regions on the board. And it was a very thinky game. Never played this with someone who has analysis paralysis because it would take them years to take their turn. But so many options, so much fun. Java. Number six is another game in this mass trilogy, and that's Mexica. Now, this one was just recently re released by What's Your Meeple and uh, Yellow. And this is another one with Kiesling, of course. Um, this game which was not my favorite of the trilogy when it came out, but easily is now where you are basically building canals and then trying to control these areas that you've built with the canal. So you can kind of cut someone else's area, make it smaller with the canal so they get fewer points or take your time controlling a bigger area. It's a pretty mean, vicious style game, but I like it a lot. Beautiful components, Mexico. Number five is another one with Kiesling, and that's Pueblo. Pueblo is an abstract strategy game which just blows my mind with how good it is. In this game, you have these three-dimensional pieces, which are all shaped the same, and you are placing them on this board and then moving this chief around. You don't want this chief to see your pieces, so you're trying to cover them up with these neutral pieces or, hope, or hide your pieces behind other players' colors. Also, occasionally, he will look from above on the board. And that's the whole game. But the options and the ideas and the, the way that you build this, this Pueblo is really, really excellent abstract strategy game. My number five. Number four, this one is not with Michael Kiesling. It's with a pair of other designers, but is one of my favorite games of his, and that's Coliseum. Coliseum is a game which sounds like, dur, 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 you know, go in and fight, but it's not. It's you are putting on shows. So you build your own little Coliseum, and you're going to put on shows, and you want people to come to that. So you're just, you're trying to trade other people. There's auctioning and, and bartering as you try to get the, the different components and people and actors and animals that you need for your shows, put them on, try to get the emperor there, sell season tickets. It's a great game. was just reprinted by Tasty Minstrel Coliseum. Number three 
is uh, one that he did by himself or maybe with a few other designers. Well, the, the re-release of it's with a few other designers and that's Downforce. Rob Davio um, helped remake this one. It's an older racing game of his, but I really like Downforce. It's this game in which you are, your cars are racing around a track. There's a lot of them. You have one car. Of course, you want your car to do well, but as time goes by, you might bid on other players' cars. And the way cars move is you play a card and each you move all the different colors that are shown on that card. So you might realize your car's not going to win. That's fine. Start bidding on someone else's car and you can win the game that way. A lot of fun. Easy, fun. Plays up to six. Highly recommend it. Number two, we're back to Michael Kiesling. This game I love. I know that I'm in a minority. Not as many people have played this game, but I think it's fantastic. And that's Adventureland. Adventureland was one of the games that Haba did when they started doing their family-style games. And this one is just phenomenal to me. There's a grid, and there's actually three different games in the box. And if you buy the expansion, three other games where they all play differently. Where on your turn, you can move one of your, your guys as far to the right or as far down as you want. They can never go the other direction. Meanwhile, random things are popping up on this grid, monsters and weapons and things, and you need to get those and fight and maybe control different areas, and so you have to decide how far to move, which is a mechanism I like a lot. It just plays really well with the expansion. There's a full co-op version to it. Just a great game overall, Adventureland. My favorite game of Wolfgang Kramer was not designed with Michael Kiesling, though. Designed with Richard Ulrich, and that is El Grande. Now, although Adventureland is, is nudging up there to become my favorite game of his, but uh, El Grande still, area control, games where you try to put area majority, you have the most things in an area. El Grande. Games where you get first points for having the most in an area, second most in an area, third most in an area, El Grande. That's pretty much all El Grande is. It's extremely simple, and yet it's the granddaddy of all these, and yet holds its own. But it also holds its own for this very unique card system, where you're playing cards, and the lower the number, uh, you're, you're, you have a, this, basically you're going to play a card that will let you go first, which can help you control things, or give you this great special ability. There's also an expansion which even emphasizes this more. So if you're on deck, it's it's just this really cool thing. Everyone's the same. There's not much randomness in the game at all. The cards show up in different orders, but you have to work around that. It is an amazing game. Scales really well too, from three to five players. My favorite game that Mr. Kramer has designed. What are your favorite games? There's a lot that I didn't mention because he has designed quite a few. There's some big name ones I've missed too, I'm sure. He's a great designer. Look forward to seeing what he does in the future. Tell me in the comments your favorite ones. Until next time though, I'm Tom Bass and you've been watching the best of designers, Wolfgang Kramer.